kind of been avoiding coming in here to my my high tunnel because it's been a sore subject that um, it's been a little bit of a sore subject I had a little situation last year in our high tunnel um, later in the season towards the towards the end um, I guess somehow we got hornworms in here and they started to kind of just demolish the the tomato plants luckily it was kind of closer to the end of the season so I pulled everything up and was like you know what it's okay we're gonna try again next year and so we did um, I did kind of step up my game a little bit when it comes to the high tunnel and like just making sure that the vents both of the vents that we have in the front of the high tunnel were screened off just to prevent any hornworms from coming in here through the vents and I thought we did a good job I really did and so I cleaned everything last year um, planted planted this year and I guess I didn't really do a good enough job because I swear I was down for one week um, shortly after our honey harvest and uh, I lost all my I lost all my tomatoes and to be honest I didn't even want to come up here I mean it was just kind of like I don't know I just I had no desire I had no desire and kind of disappointed extremely disappointed that um, all this work all of this work was destroyed by these and the week after I was down after my honey harvest I came up here and I I, I took the black light flashlight and I picked probably a hundred hornworms and I did that for like two days and it, it just just did me in a little bit um, and so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna rip everything up and I'm gonna try again because that's what we do we don't give up this is devastating yes and it really broke me and I, I started looking at my inventory downstairs on my tomato stock and we ate a lot of spaghetti sauce <laughs> um, and I was just kind of feeling like I was kind of feeling like I failed um, because I didn't want to have to go buy tomato sauce I didn't want to have to go try to to spend the money on buying all the tomatoes that I would need to be able to do the amount of tomato sauce that we um, that we need so if anyone has dealt with hornworms like this if you have any guidance I would be glad to listen um, but I think what I'm gonna have to do is take everything up even the ground cover and um, I'm gonna rip it all up and I'm going to start fresh uh, this fall um, that's kind of my goal I'm gonna start fresh and uh, we also got hit with some storms so my electric all of my my electrical came falling down um, which it, it's not a fire hazard I mean it was just secured up there um, but I'm, I'm gonna have to redo all of it and it's just something that I have not had much of the energy to do I just I haven't I haven't had the desire I haven't had the energy it's been too hot I'm finding as many excuses as I possibly can to avoid this <laughs> avoid this area and it's just as it hurts because I put so much time and effort into these tomato plants and to have this type of loss can kick you down but I am going to say the words to myself that I say to the thousands of people that come and and um, are part of this of what we're doing but it's there are days like this 
make you appreciate those good days just a little bit more. And you know, we have to experience some of those bad days to be able to appreciate the good. And so I am just going to continue telling myself that. And this is not, um, this is not exactly something that I, I've been excited to share about. But I have to tell you something that happened to me, um, that happened to my family the other day. And uh, I've kind of stayed quiet on this. I haven't really, I don't know, I just didn't really have the words <laughs> to say like that all of this happened, especially because I've had so many years of just a bountiful harvest. But, I'm gonna tell you how I believe that God provides because this is just beyond. This is just beyond. Um, so the other day, I got a text from my husband saying that one of our our dear uh, family friends that live right down the road who, you know, I've heard of their garden, I've heard of how beautiful it is, and I'm, I'm hoping to maybe go, go have a field trip over there and uh, and see their garden, but I got a text message the other day from my husband saying like, hey, you know, so-and-so is gonna come over and um, he's got some tomatoes he's gonna bring us. And I was like, oh, you know, thank you. Like, I BLT sandwiches, you know, that's what I'm thinking, like sandwiches. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm just thinking like just a few tomatoes. Um, he brought me so many tomatoes beyond the amount of tomatoes that I, I mean, I did not anticipate that at all. And I hadn't really said anything, you know, about our garden, about this, and just feeling like, just being kicked down. Um, but the fact that, that his garden flourished, and he had that many to share after they've already canned, after they've already preserved all of their tomatoes. And when he came with the box, the, the box, the big old basket of them, I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And I, I just kind of shared, I was like, I, my, this is what happened. I felt like I couldn't put, put up any sauce this year. And uh, he was like, well, I'll be back, I'll be back. And he came back about an hour later and brought more. And I just had a moment of just being like, how thankful, you know, thankful that my my neighbor did that. And not only that, but how thankful I am for God for providing for the things that I, I didn't have, you know? And I, like I said, I didn't want to go spend the money. Tomato sauce is getting expensive. You know, I, I, I kind of called it a loss and I just accepted it for what it was. But God provided. You know, he provided my neighbor's garden to be so bountiful that he was able to bless other people. And, you know, it just, it, it just, I, I don't have any words other than how thankful I am. Now, he didn't leave empty handed. We have been blessed this year with the abundance of honey. And so I, I grabbed a bunch of jars of honey and I loaded them up into his car and I'm actually gonna give him more honey because I feel like my honey to tomato bartering ratio might be a little bit off, but it just, it, it blows my mind to have moments like this happen where I didn't verbalize and vocalize my loss and God still provided. So, I am so thankful. We're gonna go in and um, I'm gonna start making sauce and I'm gonna take you guys with me. So, let's go.
doing yes. is I'm just gonna I put a towel here mm -hmm. and then I'm just gonna cut them in four and four for the smaller ones yes and then yes. just put them in Ooh, here, here. Okay. the bigger ones we might need to cut oh. a little bit yeah this so. one if you got it yeah no good good yep and okay. then we just put it in there and then mm -hmm. I'm gonna get the sauce maker machine sure but here's a towel just yeah. in case if you get thank wet you. yeah thank you so like this one you yeah. cut it in half? Yep, cut it in half and then you can cut it again. Don't worry about this. But this. Because okay. I got a machine that'll yeah, clean it, it all Yeah, it does. Up. Okay, so now so you cut it. Cut it in half again. And yeah. then you want more? Um, if you want to cut it this way, it's fine. It doesn't, you know. It don't matter. Yeah, this it doesn't way. matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I and know then, what you mean. And you, you need piece like yeah. this. And yeah, and you do as many as you feel like Can. you want to do. Yes. So, and I got a lot more I'm going to go get ready. Yeah. And this, so, you don't mind about this? Nope, don't mind okay. about it because the machine, the you'll machine. see, I'm going to set up the okay, sauce making good. machine. Okay, good. Making me busy. That's good. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> it's going to keep you busy. We got a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's good. We, we can lot. do it. Yeah. I'm glad. Good? Yeah. We're going to make spaghetti sauce tonight. Oh we'll have my. spaghetti for dinner. I got to learn how to do, oh, you, you know so much. I can't believe, where do you learn all this? We will learn, we'll show you. <laughs> That's good. And you got a white knife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she know what I like, they so hard. <laughs> hey, must say well, they give you so much, mm -hmm. you know? I went ahead and brought up our sauce making machine. Now, I, think I have a love-hate relationship with that thing and to be honest with you I, I'm gonna be honest I don't know if I would buy the brand that I actually have so I bought it from Beaver 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 what however you want to pronounce it and I have followed the instructions this is two times now um, I had to send one back because I was like mm -mm, it's just not cutting it um, customer service was horrible. I will be very honest and open about that. And that is why I'm saying this is not the one that I would go ahead and purchase. Um, so if anybody has a sauce making machine that you guys use, let me know what that is because I will gladly love to attempt to trial another company that might offer one um, that is actually really, really good. I did purchase this one and I'm following the instructions on setting it up which the problem that I found, and this is the problem that I had last time, if I install the inner portion the same exact way that it tells you to with the, with the, the spring, it does not spin at all. It like locks it into place. Now, if this does not work, then we're gonna go back to the old fashioned, the old fashioned, uh, way um, but they wouldn't give me my money back and customer service dealing with them was not fun at all and so i got a new one but if it comes down to it i don't know i'm just gonna end up scrapping it and look for another company so yeah if anybody has one that they like at this point i'm almost half tempted to just not even get an electric one and just get an old-fashioned like hand cranking one because this was not an inexpensive purchase and that is why i'm going to tell you because i know i'm going to have a lot of people that are going to ask me about this machine i don't know if, to be very honest with you if it is worth the amount of money that i spent on it i did not get it for free this is not a paid thing this is not a sponsored thing i will not add this one to my any any affiliate link that I have, just I don't know if I would waste my time or energy with it. Um, so fingers crossed, I can get it to work because I have a lot to do today, and um, making sauce is definitely a blessing. But I've got to move animals today as well, so we're gonna get we're gonna get on this.
So this, so that's not a motor issue. So this part goes in first and it locks in. If I can get it set directly. Okay. And then the spring is supposed to go. Now I'm going to show you the motors that it is working. So that's fine. Then this part, let's see. This part right here. So this is supposed to fit into that, which it is. And there's a spring, which I, I attempted to use it without the spring and it spun, but then when I put the tomatoes in, it didn't work. So then I put the spring back in. So just to kind of show you, it is working. I think it's this. So when I go to put this on, it feeds in and then it locks just like that. Now, when I go to turn it on, it stops spinning. I think there's too much resistance. loosen it, like I think this is not supposed to fit so tight because that's what's happening. I think it's just like wearing, which is crazy because this is how it came. I follow the instructions and even if I do it a little loose, I'm gonna tinker around with that thing, just not anymore. Now, I started kind of thinking about what I'm gonna do with um, with the tomatoes. And I could easily peel. I could easily come back through and all the ones that we've sliced off and I could peel the skin off. I've saved the skin in the past and I've actually dehydrated it. And I, I learned that from a farm girl in the making because once you dehydrate all of your tomato skins, you can um, powder it up and then add water and that'll act like a thickening agent, like a, like a tomato paste. That is, was really helpful with, um, with a lot of our, our tomato stock. But then I started doing some research. And so this was something that I thought was kind of interesting. I had a, a few people chime in in some of our last tomato videos, our, our last sauce making videos over, over the years. And they have shared that they actually leave the tomato skin on their tomatoes. They just take a food processor in the end and then just blend it all up. So I wanted to kind of, you know, do a little bit of research and I just hopped on my phone, started looking up why. Why would you leave the tomato skin on your tomatoes when you're making sauce? And in short, what I found really quickly is yes, it's very possible. One, because I know that because a lot of you guys have shared that you guys do it. Um, but two, there is some added um, minerals and vitamins that are in the skin that you could absolutely use uh, to benefit yourself. Now, I wanted to kind of kind of dive in and look a little bit more about that because I didn't know if maybe pressure canning it if possibly that process, you might lose the minerals and the vitamins. My plan was to probably just go ahead and water bath this, um, but I think at this point, <laughs> given my limited time and the fact that um, I know that there's a lot of you that have shared this with me, that it works just fine. It's not a, it, this, I've never done it this way, but that's okay. There are many different ways to achieve the same exact goal. And I know that because I live that and I see that in everything that we do here on our homestead. So we're gonna give this a shot. We're gonna see if we can learn something old <laughs> and try this together. And I'm also going ahead and saving seeds because we are going to absolutely plant these next year. And, um, I mean, these tomatoes are beautiful. 
I, I know that they don't use anything on their garden, which is exactly why I'm just like beyond, beyond thankful for this gracious gift um, that they have provided for my family that is going to feed us for an entire year. Um, but right now I've got them soaking in water. I'm going to clean the water here in a second and then put them in the mason jar. But basically what I've done in the past is I've soaked my seeds and see all that like jelly film <laughs> at some point that will come off and um, then I'll take the seeds and I'll lay them on paper towels and then we'll have more than enough for for next next year's garden but kind of simple just going through and just doing it like that and then breaking my hand break taking it and breaking them up with my hand but uh yeah what a blessing and speaking about being a blessing um the other day I was thinking about that. How can I be a blessing? How can I offer um, something that might be helpful? And I put a lot of content out and I know I share a good bit. Um, there's still so much. There's still so much. And every day you're gonna forever learn. I don't care how long that you've been doing herbalism or beekeeping or being a homemaker or homesteading. Like I, I don't care how long you've been doing this. You will forever learn. And that is one thing that I really enjoy is taking everybody along with us and sharing. Um, but I wanted to do more. And so I started thinking about how I can be more. How can I do this more? And um, I, I wanted to start opening up and offering at least for one individual when we have our hands-on workshops to come in and be have an opportunity to to learn um and in turn of you know having that hands-on and kind of like a work study program at least to allow for somebody to come in who might not be able to financially afford our workshops but still be able to to be a valuable asset to us as well as have that opportunity so what what i've decided to do was um, at least take one person and and allow for that person to do like an application program to where they could come in and just be and have that have that opportunity our workshops are very small and that's one thing that i really love about them because i want that intimate opportunity to take people and share about either the bees or with the herbs or anything so the day that i had that thought about you know how can i how can I do more? I received a message on Instagram from a beautiful homemaker, a beautiful homestead mama that isn't far from us. And um, I have to sit down and call her today because I'm gonna offer her an opportunity to to do this and, and to come for the day and come and, and be the hands-on and, and help as well. It's going to be very much of a a partner opportunity for this um, but I just thought that that was ironic that that day I was having that thought and and then I got the message so so in the future um, we're going to try to I'm gonna try to set something aside to where I can like if you want to apply for a day to just come and have that hands-on ability um, for our workshops then and that's something that I think will be not only valuable for the individual but also for for what we're doing um, and that's also part of building building our community so I'm very excited to be able to to give back and offer offer more I think after sharing that I I guess I had a moment a human moment where I completely forgot to record the step right before this but I did take my immersion blender and I just blended up all of the tomatoes with the skin included right here in the roasting pan I made an absolute mess but that is okay um, I'll also add that by keeping the skin on your tomatoes it will make your sauce a little bit thicker and because this is our first time doing it like this I wanted to go ahead and just do the more traditional way of scolding and peeling the tomatoes. Um, so that is what I'm gonna show you that step next. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without me making an absolute mess in the process. So yeah, I just take my, take my knife 
and just make an X and then I'll throw that in a pot of hot water for a couple of seconds because what's gonna happen is as soon as it's done, as soon as it's out of the water, I take it, put it in the sink, and then you can just peel. You can peel the skin right off, which I do have a I have a bowl that I'm already that I'm already saving um, all of the skin. But and then when it gets to the core. I absolutely love this little spoon. I, it's, uh oh, can you see it? So this little spoon, it's got like little sharp teeth, um, but basically it's, I guess it's called a coring spoon. I don't know, there's, you can use a spoon, you can do a knife, but I basically just take it and core out the inside. Um, yeah, nothing fancy. As soon as I start to see them kind of peel away, like uh -oh, like that one right there, then I would say it is done. And I just plop it in the sink. So the skin just kind of comes right off, which is awesome. And put it in my bowl. I have made the biggest mess. I've got tomato all over my wall. <laughs> It's all over myself, it is okay. And then I just take it and core it. And then I'm left with a beautiful, juicy tomato. So, I say we fill up what we can. I actually kind of learned something. What's that? So, the moisture, last time, the last batch we did was a little bit watering. Right. So I think keeping the lid off is smart because look how much well, you didn't see it, but I had that completely full. Mm -hmm. But the moisture, I think, is evaporating. Oh, okay. Which I think is smart because I last time, last time I had it a little bit too much. Okay. Um, and then <laughs> I'm squeezing the tomatoes a little bit, and then I'm breaking them up that and works. just doing it. Oh, I think you got me. I did. I got myself. I've got literally, I've got tomato all over the entire wall. Um, but I was kind of breaking it up and just my hands are clean. Your hands are clean. Yep. So that's kind of what I was. That's what you're going after. That's what I'm going after because. Well, I'll let you do the squeezing. Okay. I'll do the peel and I can do the peeling and the spoon. And the... I mean, I don't want to oh. peel <laughs> in the spoon in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I want to keep some of the moisture in it. Okay. I mean, some of the liquid in it, obviously. Um, well, but I can just help peel it. Yeah. Okay, I will squeeze. Yeah, I'm actually kind of excited just from hearing people's comments about how they were able to just keep the skin on. Right. Now, I should have probably run the food, like actually use like a food processor. Yeah, but we didn't do that last time either. No. So you're putting peels in there. I think I'm, I'm messing out your saving, system here. Yeah. So peels in there, cores in there. Because okay. I might, I'm gonna assess them. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna dehydrate these again. Okay. Um, for that paste. I saw something where they freeze dried them. You know what? We could powder it. Yeah, that's what they did. They freeze dried it. Genius. I know. We're gonna do that. Well, it's not my idea. It's you know. No, but it's still, that's smart. I agree. Okay. All right. This is really fun. Are you angry? You Do you have any anger? You want to squeeze some tomatoes? I know. <laughs> My day has definitely gotten away from us. I had to leave in the process of this and go help my husband, move some animals around, and then do the kid thing, and then also get the dinner thing going, which we ended up having spaghetti, which was delicious. Um, but I got one entire roasting pan just full of spaghetti sauce, and then the other one, my mom helped me get that one set up as salsa. So these are going to just kind of be low and slow for the night because I don't have it in me to do any canning tonight. Um, so we will 
pick that up on another on another night but what I think I'm gonna do because my mom had a really good idea about the tomato skins that we have instead of dehydrating them I am going to freeze dry so the next video I'll probably finish the canning process and then adding in the spices I didn't add any spices in on this um, and then we'll go ahead and set the freeze dryer up with those tomato skins so you will see that video next after this one I don't think I could lump it all in one video or else it would be like two hours long I feel like um, but thank you guys for coming with me and just kind of hearing a little bit about how um, what I thought was a a complete and total loss um, from my high tunnel that turned into an amazing blessing uh, and on that note to finish this I also reached out to the, the sweet lady that is gonna come and be a part of our workshop and um, what that blessing did for her it's all it's it's about paying it forward so yes do something kind for somebody because nobody knew that nobody knew that I was in need of tomatoes <laughs> and isn't that funny how um, how God works so as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye, guys.